Good morning, and welcome out here to Port Norris Baptist Church, the adult Sunday school class. I'm your teacher, Ken Wilford. It's good to have you folks here with us today. And before we get started today, we're going to go to the Lord in a word of prayer. I just want to ask some prayer for uh, the family of Brother Gary Jones. He just passed away on Friday, I believe, last week. Um, he's had a lot of physical issues. He actually had the COVID virus at the end, but uh, on top of lots and lots of other physical issues, and uh, he finally uh, succumbed to that. So be in prayer for his wife, Sandy, and the family as they uh, make preparations for his funeral this upcoming week. All right, let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. We'll get started. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Pray bless our time. Bless the lesson. Use it in our hearts and lives. Help us to be the people we need to be for you. Be with our nation, Lord, during this time. Pray you just help send a revival in our land. And just uh, bless our church, Lord, help it to grow. We thank you and praise you for all these things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so we've been going through our new book, which is the Parables of Jesus. Okay, the Parables of Jesus. And parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. It is a story that Jesus told that the people that were there listening to him could understand what he was talking about um, and he could relate a uh, spiritual truth to them through it. Okay, so <clears throat> this week we're going to talk about who is neighbor to those in need. Okay, who's a neighbor, who is neighbor to those in need? In other words, are you being a good neighbor? And you know, he asked the question, when was the last time you helped someone that was in need? Okay, uh, the person who shows act of kindness is referred to as being neighborly. Okay, and so uh, let's go to Luke chapter 10. We're going to read the story about the Good Samaritan. Luke chapter 10, verse 30 through 37. So then Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way. When he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise, a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked at it on him and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him and went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence and gave them to the host and said unto him, Take care of him. And whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Which now of these three, thinkest thou, was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And he said, He that showed mercy on him. Then she said Jesus unto him, Go, and do thou likewise. Okay, so <clears throat> this story was told, this parable was told, because of a question that a lawyer, someone who was well versed in the law, had asked Jesus in Luke 10 25 let's go back to that and he came here for the specific purpose of tempting the Lord in other words that he's trying to test him he's trying to make him say something that's going to you know uh, foul him up and say something that's going to make Jesus look bad or uh, something he can accuse them of later okay uh, and uh, yeah, how can you uh, catch somebody off guard who knows everything <laughs> from the beginning of time? It was a, it was a fool's errand, but whatever. So, Luke chapter 10, verse 25 through 27. So, behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? And he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. Okay. And Jesus said to him, uh, the Lord said to him, verse 28, Thou hast answered right, this do, and thou shalt live. Okay. So, the lawyer, Jesus asked him, what, you know, what does this law say you're supposed to do to inherit eternal life? Okay, well, basically be perfect. <laughs> right? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, strength, and love your neighbor as you love yourself and nothing to do with you, everything to do with God and others. And you have to do that perfect. And Jesus is like, yep, there you go. You're right. The problem is, nobody can do that. 
right? Nobody can do that. And no one had ever kept all the law except for the guy this lawyer was talking to, the Lord Jesus Christ himself. He was the only perfect one that ever lived. And so, this the law was there to convict us of sin. The law is there to convict us of the reality that we cannot keep it. So this lawyer felt like he was going to justify himself before the Lord and say, all right, how do I get eternal life? And the Lord's like, okay, keep the law perfect. And the lawyer was like, I can't do that. Nobody's did it. Right? Nobody's perfect. He felt convicted about it. Instead of, you know, asking the Lord another question like, hey, well, um, isn't that impossible or something like that? Uh, he tries to justify himself or change the subject or whatever you want to say uh, by saying, okay, so I have to love my neighbor as myself. Who is my neighbor? Okay, because I need to know okay, specifically who my neighbor is or else I won't really know if I'm actually going to be able to do this. Okay? And, you know, that's the bad part. He, he didn't realize the point was to show him he couldn't do it. Instead... He felt like, okay, give me some more rules to follow. Give me, clarify the rules. You know, that's kind of what the rabbis were doing back then. And the rabbis are still doing today in the Jewish nation, in the, in the religion, okay, Judaism. They just supposedly sit around and they come up with, you know, clarifications of the law so that people can know how to try to keep it perfectly and they've added so many rules on top of the Ten Commandments and these other laws in an effort to try to make it so that people could keep it perfectly instead of realizing hey you know what nobody can keep it I'm sorry but we need something else and that's what actually the point of the law was so when this guy came up with this thing of who is my neighbor okay he was asking, you know, who am I supposed to give things to? Who am I supposed to show compassion on? Who's worthy of it? Okay. Um, and at the end of the story about the Good Samaritan, Jesus says, Which now of these three thinkest thou was the neighbor unto him that fell among thieves? And he said, He that showed mercy on him. So Jesus turned this whole thing around. Okay. The man said, Who's, the, who's my neighbor? Who am I supposed to help? Jesus is like, who was the helper of this man? Okay. So in other words, instead of who should I help, it is are you are you being a helper? Okay, are you the helper? And that was actually the point. Okay, that's actually the point of the story of the Good Samaritan. It's not that well, I'll, let's continue on. <clears throat> so the first we see in this parable is the injury against the traveler. It says, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho, fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him, departed, leaving him half dead. Okay, so Jerusalem was the holy city. Jericho is the cursed city. Okay, when Jericho, the walls came tumbling down, Joshua cursed it that it should never be rebuilt. But today, if you went to Israel, it's there. It was rebuilt, but it was had as a curse on it. Um, and the curse that Joshua gave was fulfilled already. So, it's a cursed city. Okay? It's the story of the fall of man. right? Going from the holiness of perfection and innocence to falling into sin. Okay? It's a man fell among thieves. right? Devil, the Bible calls him a thief and, and a robber. And a liar. And a murderer. Okay? Uh, so, this parable is more than just a story. It pictures the fall of man and the sinful condition. And the thieves robbed a man, wounded him, left him half dead. Okay, leaving him half dead. That means that it was in the balance. Is he going to live or is he going to die? Okay, it could go either way. It could go either way. That's what it's talking about being half dead. That he could live or he could die. And that's the same thing that happens with us. We are alive physically, but spiritually we're dead. And if we die in this life without getting saved then we're going to spend eternity in hell we're going to be eternally dead and destroyed okay uh, you know and suffer forever that's not good we need to be made alive again we need to be healed 
Okay, so we see this man here who the injury to the travel, then the indifference of those passing by. Okay, those that passed by were not expected to be cold-hearted, but they were. As the Bible says, by chance came down a certain priest that way. Okay, so here was this priest coming by. This was the man who was the spiritual leader. He was in charge of making the sacrifices, the offerings. Okay, but when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. He avoided him. Okay, uh, the, this road that goes between Jerusalem to Jericho is called the Valley of the Shadow of Death. Wow, sounds nice. It's like a nice scenic, you know, walk going down the Valley of the Shadow of Death. I, I would sound like someplace I would avoid like the plague. But, okay, and this was an old Roman highway that along the road were lots of caves and things where thieves could hide. And so this was a scary place. This was a place that you went through quick and got through it as quick as possible. And so, you know, this priest could have thought, hey, this guy's laying here. This is a trap, right? He's laying here as all beat up. Maybe he is really beat up. Maybe he isn't. Maybe the bad guys beat him up and left him there as kind of bait to see if they could get another guy. Okay. So he just, he left. He walked by. Okay. Uh, but this is talking about the priestly office. Okay, no amount of offering or sacrifice given could meet the need of those represented by this man. Okay, all the priests, all the offerings could not help them. Okay, could not help them. You know, that's the idea. You know, again, the offerings aren't even offered today in the Jewish religion, even though the scriptures has never said to stop. <laughs> okay. The only reason they stopped is because there's no temple. Um, and they've rationalized it, why they stopped. Uh, for us as Christians, the reason why we don't do it is because we're under a New Testament, like we talked about last week. We don't have to do sacrifices because there was one sacrifice, the Lamb of God. Okay? And he was sacrificed. That's what the, all the other ones were pointing to. And so for us, we don't do sacrifices because of that. And we also don't worship on, on the Sabbath, Saturday. We worship on Sunday, the first day of the week. Why? Because that is the day that Jesus rose from the dead. Okay? That is the day that the early church came and met together. Read the scriptures. There's a reason. Okay, We're, There's a reason. We don't keep the law. Instead, the law has been kept by our Savior. And all we do is trust in him and what he has done. Okay. So let's keep going. Likewise, a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. Okay, again, a Levite was a religious leader. <coughs> he was expected to be the kind of person who would help. Okay. Um, but he didn't. Okay, he did because again, he might have thought, I don't know, maybe this man isn't worthy of my help. Okay, who is this guy? I don't know him. And the Levite who witnessed the sacrifice and offerings did not care. He held a position, but he had no compassion. Okay, and that's really the point of this story, is having compassion. And so then we see the Samaritan, right? Uh, so the Samaritans were people who, when the northern tribes, right, uh, the kingdom of Israel, had did a lot of wicked stuff, eventually they got defeated by the Assyrians, and then the Assyrians actually carted them away. And they actually planted back uh, colonies of their own people right, in, in the northern part of Israel. Then eventually some of the J Jewish people, but they were kind of mixed race, came back and took back over parts of northern Israel. Uh, and at one point they came to the people that had returned in the southern thing. The southern tribes, Judah, Judea, and said, hey, we want to help you guys build the temple. Right? They came to, in the book of Ezra. They offered to help build it. But the, the Jews of Judea, they said, no, because you guys are you know, mixed in with Gentiles. Your ideas are mixed in with pagan worship. So, sorry. And so the Samaritans went and built their own temple. Okay, there's a there's a ruins of a Samaritan temple that they claim is actually more accurate or it's better preserved than what we have of the 
a Jewish temple. They built a copy of Solomon's original temple, and the floor plan is still there. So we can kind of see a little bit better detail of the Samaritan one because it wasn't as utterly wiped out and destroyed as the one in Jerusalem was. But ever since this time, there was a friction between the Samaritans and the Jews where they basically hated each other. Okay? They hated each other. They had nothing to do with each other. And that's what this time period we come into here um, in Luke 10.33, but a certain Samaritan. Okay, Now I'm sure this guy who asked this question is like, a Samaritan? Why, are we, why is he coming in this story? Okay, uh, A certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was and saw him. He had compassion on him. Uh, he had compassion on him. And so, you know, this Samaritan was traveling here. He saw this man off to the side of the road. And he said, oh, wow, man, I want to help this man. I don't, doesn't matter to me if he's a Jew or a Samaritan or whatever, right? He's a man that needs help. I'm going to help him, okay? And he might have thought, Oh, I wonder if there's if the people that beat him up are still around. But he said, you know what? I'm going to take the risk. Okay, I'm going to take the risk and help this man, even if you know it's it can be risky, it can be scary. Okay, uh, verse 34 says, and he went to him, bound up his wounds, and pouring in oil and wine. Okay, these are pictures of the Holy Spirit, that the oil and the wine, the precious blood of Christ. And that they are necessary for our healing. The Bible says he set him on his own beast. Okay, so he got off of this animal he was traveling on, put this man on it. Now he's walking, and this guy's riding. That's you're humbling yourself back then when you're doing that. Okay, um, and that's what the Lord did for us, right? He humbled himself, took on the form of a servant, okay, and uh, he became obedient as a servant unto death, even the death of the cross. And he brought him to an end and took care of him. Okay, so some people give money so they don't have to give of themselves and their time. Some people give time so they do not have to give money. Here was a man who gave time, money, and the most important part, himself. Okay, he demonstrated compassion. Okay, compassion. And so, you know, on the morrow when he departed, he took out two pence, gave it to the host, and said unto him, Take care of him. And whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Okay, so, you know, this is who this man was. He was a man of compassion. It cost him something. Okay, again, two pence was well, not just two pennies. Like, here you go, I have some nice two little pennies for it. No, that's like two whole days worth of wages. And he told the man, okay, if it's more, you know, that should put him up in this hotel for probably a week or more, two weeks. And if it's more, when I come back this way again, tell me and I'll pay it. Okay, put it on my tab. <laughs> so the point was made to the Lord that the Samaritan, whom they would not expect to have compassion, had compassion. What about us, right? What about us? And that is what we have to talk to about ourselves. So, again, this man, the intention of the parable. Christ told the story and then brought it to a conclusion. The lawyer says, who is my neighbor? Okay, who is my neighbor? And... You know, he was saying, "Who explain to me who my neighbor is. Okay, instead, the Lord said, it's the person, you know, that's not the point. The point is, who, are you being a neighbor, right, to others around you? And, you know, that's the most convicting part to me about this. Because we see people around us every day that are hurting, that need help. And a lot of times we don't help them. We make up the reasons why we don't, we shouldn't help them. I'm busy. Okay, I don't have time. Uh, they probably don't deserve help. They probably are have issues and problems that I can't help them with. So I'm just not even going to try. <laughs> okay, uh, and you know it comes down to ourselves. You know, in a way that. There are there people out there that do not deserve our help? Uh, yes. Okay. Are there people out there who are trying to take advantage of people who, you know, giving money and giving clothes and all these other things? Uh, yes, yes, there are. Okay. Uh, 
okay? But, what does that have to do with us? Okay, you see what I'm saying? Now, I'm not saying be foolish with your money. If you see a person who has a substance problem, I wouldn't give them cash, okay? And I wouldn't whip out my wallet in front of them and, and show them all my, all my money because I don't want to get smacked upside the head and get my money robbed. But, if somebody was like, hey, I need food, you could take them to the place and get them some food. Okay? If they don't want to do that, right, you, at least you tried. You know, this is all about our part. I know, you know, in a way, and, and a lot of times, like I said, we use excuses, I did it, to not help people. Because you say, well, they're just, they got drug problems, and they, uh, you know, brought it on themselves, or whatever. And I think in America, we're bad about that, that we feel like, hey, if people are down their luck, they deserve it. Okay, and sometimes they do, de they kind of do deserve it, because they are, you know, abusing drugs, abusing alcohol. Okay, but that's not the point. Okay, the point is, are we being a neighbor to them? Because that is the thing that's going to reach them with the gospel. You know, they're not going to get reached by the gospel by people that they see these people drive by or they see people walk by and just ignore them. And they're like, wow, they're right when they ignored me because I don't really deserve anyone helping me. <laughs> okay? <laughs> they're not going to get reached by the gospel that way. They're going to get reached by the gospel when they don't deserve being helped and they know it. Okay? <laughs> And you know it too, but because you love the Lord, right, you're going to be like Him and have compassion on these people and try to help them and try to do something for them. Okay? And so, you know, that's what my encouragement is to you today is to, you know, see if you see somebody that needs help, you know, try to help them in some way. If you don't, you're hurting yourself. Okay, you're hurting yourself. You're hardening your heart. And really, say we help this person. There's people out there. You help them. I did it. You help them. And they say, "What else you got?" And you help them again. What else you got? And you help them again. What else you got? Right. This is why we get hard-hearted about it because it's people that just abuse us. Okay, I had one guy that I was helping. Uh, he was walking everywhere, and I had an extra bike that was actually in really good condition. I was riding it. I said, hey, man, could you use a bike to get around? And because you're walking everywhere, he was walking to Millville from Port Norris. I mean, it was just, that's a lot of walking. Oh, yeah, I could use it. Yeah, man, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I gave it to him. <laughs> like a week later, he's coming to me. Oh. Uh. The tire popped, and I need a new tire. Where's a tire? I need a tire. I'm like, am I married to this bike now? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? It's like, <laughs> you give somebody something for free, and they can't even, like, buy a tire for it. But, you know, again, it's, <laughs> it's not about that part of it. You know, it's about trying to help people. Now, like I said, there is a difference between helping someone and enabling someone. Okay, so, you know, there's some people out there, they would just enable people. They're like, hey, do you need money? Here's 20 bucks. Here's 30 bucks, 50 bucks. You know, I don't really want to, in a way, this is my way of not being bothered by you. Okay, I see you there. My conscience bothers me because I'm not helping you. So here's just money. Take this money. The problem with that is, you know, that money you're giving that person could kill them. Okay, you could be killing, you could be murdering them give them that money, they go out and buy heroin, they OD, boom, they're dead. That could happen just that easy. Okay, so you have to be wise about it. Like I said, if someone says, I, you know, I'm hungry, you can go get them some food. You say, I don't ha I'm out of clothes, you give them, get them some clothes. Okay, uh, what they do with it, if they don't really use it properly, if they don't appreciate it or whatever, that's actually on them, right? We don't even know what this man's reaction to this was. The Lord never tells us this. He never says, the man that got saved by the Samaritan became his friend forever, and they were best buddies, and they 
they lived happily ever after as neighbors and friends. No. We never hear any of that. This, this Jewish man that got saved by the Samaritan could be like, ah, stupid Samaritans, I hate them anyway. That could be a, something that happened. We don't know. The, that wasn't the point. The point was the person, Samaritan, having compassion on this man and displaying that. Okay? And that has to have an impact on at least him. On at least the person who's doing it. Okay? It's having an impact on you and saying, hey, I am showing compassion like the Lord is doing. I'm being more like him. And most likely it'll have compassion on other people. It might, or impact on other people. It might have, not even have an impact on that person you're trying to help because they're so far gone. They're out there. They're completely lost it. But maybe one of their family members sees, right, that you have compassion on them, makes an impact on them. Someone in the community sees that. You see what I'm saying? And that's the point the Lord was trying to make. Okay, so the man who asked thought he was going to trick the Lord. Okay, and the question he asked was to compassion personified, who is Jesus Christ. Okay, and that even put more conviction on this man, right? The man thought, I'm going to get out of this whole thing about, you know, loving my neighbor as myself because I'll just fi find out who my neighbor is and then I can just figure out a way to not help him. The Lord's like, it's not about that. It's about, are you being that good neighbor? Okay, and so that's my encouragement to us today. The Lord give us a person this week we can show compassion on that we can you know try to be a neighbor to and if we do that then we are actually being like Christ let's go ahead and pray appreciate your time this morning Heavenly Father thank you for your goodness to us today I pray you bless the lesson Lord this lesson is very convicting to me because we see so many people around us every day that holding up signs and saying that they need money and it's hard to just dismiss it. It's easy to just dismiss it and just drive on and not pay attention to them. Uh, but Lord, I pray to help us as we go through our week. You would give us an opportunity to show compassion to others. That we would be able to do that in a way that would have an impact for you. And also that it would just help us to be more like you. Now just be with those, any that's never trusted Christ as their Savior. I pray they would do that today. Just be with our services, Lord, at, at the church today, that everything would go well there. We'll praise your name for all these things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, thank you, folks, for <clears throat> coming out with us today. Please like, share, subscribe. Click the notification bell so you can get notified every time we have a new lesson. And we will see you folks at church. It is November the 8th, 2020.